when Missouri had the ball, my dad kept being like, last time I checked, there's not a nine point touchdown. So I think we're okay. Um, but then, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I love it, Lou. <laughs> um, <laughs> welcome to my got a podcast. I'm Jim Wood. In this episode, John Powell and I review Georgia's 30 to 21 win over Missouri. We talk about our experiences on Saturday and what stood out to us during the game. As always, remember to check out the newly redesigned mygotapodcast.com to see our latest merch. And you can follow us on social media at mygotapodcast. Finally, we'd love for you to check out our presenting sponsor, Oxia Time, at oxiatime.com. That's A X I A T I M E.com. Now, let's join the conversation in progress. So, homecoming with Mizzou is over. <laughs> Just as we predicted. Just as you know what? I was like, again apologize for the voice. I, I left it all in the stadium uh <laughs> yesterday. Um you weren't too far off, John, actually. Um yeah. in the grand scheme of things. So you had you had this game 35 to 25, 30 to 21. I mean, you had a 10 point uh spread. It was a nine point spread. So I'm gonna give you some flowers. That's pretty uh, close. I'll, I'll take I'll take the flowers. It, it didn't feel good. I didn't think that it would go down the way that it went down, but uh, you know, yeah, it is, it is what it is. It felt like one of those games, like you know, I think that Rara, I think we were a drop away, like the drop that Rara had in the end zone. I think that um, had he caught that, then I think I feel like the momentum swings would have been a little bit, a little bit bigger. The point spread would have, it would have looked a little bit more impressive. But um, you can't yeah. really complain. You can't really complain beating a, an opponent like that for two scores. One of the best quarterbacks in the country, one of the best wide receivers in the country, one of the best offenses in the country. We knew that that defense was going to be kind of brutal coming in um, from a, from a running game standpoint. So I just yeah. felt like that. Um, the, I mean, the score pretty much, you know, pretty much kind of tracked with what we were feeling a little bit. Uh, like I said, we dropped some points here and there. So you know, long term, that's something that we're going to need to to shore up. Um, you know, yeah. big a big second half of performance by by the boys, and you know that's uh, that's that's all she wrote. Yeah, agreed. I think my my confidence actually grew between when we when we recorded the preview and kickoff. So I was actually expecting to win by more by the time we kicked off, and it kind of got brought me back to uh, <laughs> Monday with us talking. So you had, a few, you had a few bourbons and you got it, you got all in your feelings. And then <laughs> <laughs> I actually, I actually didn't have bourbon pregame. Uh, I had a few beers, uh, not, not a, not a ton, but yeah, I didn't have, I didn't, I didn't have bourbon. I didn't do the bourbons. Maybe did that was the problem. Bourbon at Kentucky. I did. Did yes. you have any bourbon for Florida? Okay. And you know what else, uh, you know what, you know what else I didn't do, John? I did not tweet the official hashtag. Ah, fail, fail. <laughs> All, yeah. all my fault. <laughs> all my fault. I wore a hat though. I was about to I say, wore, you wear a hat. <laughs> I wore a hat. <laughs> oh man. Well, I, I do want to, I think part of what got me so confident was listening to the folks in the panel at the home field homecoming Friday night uh, yeah. that we had let's, with Dog Central. So let's um, back up. Let's back up. So, so first of all, did you, did you run into any traffic on your way down? <laughs> I did. I did. Uh, actually, it wasn't too bad. Most of the traffic on the way down was in uh, like getting out of Charlotte. There was a slight slowdown at Gaffney. Um, actually, no, no, it was between, where was it? It was between Spartanburg and Greenville. Uh, that was actually the worst traffic. It was super random. Um, but uh, yeah, so yeah. yeah, but it wasn't too bad. Okay. Um, but because I left, you, you were heading, you were heading, you were heading into Athens though. So you had, you had, everything seems better when you're heading to Athens. That's true. And I, I had, I had podcasts to listen to on the way down. I, I listened, you know, uh, to our friends, 100 Sanford on the way down, uh, helped me pass the time. So it wasn't too bad. It wasn't too bad. Excellent. Um, so yeah, so got in, uh, stopped in, see my parents on the way in, spent a little time with them and then headed on in, into Athens, went over to the foundry, um, for a great evening. Uh, I'm going to list off some people that I ran into and I'm probably forgetting someone. So, if we talked and I don't mention you apologies, uh, there was, <laughs> it was a lot going on. It was, it was a great night. Um, uh, but walked in first person I actually saw was, was my guy, Landon, John, you know, I, I told the story of when uh young Landon brought me a chair at a tailgate 
uh, earlier this season and, and we talked. Um, so Landon and, and, and his family were there. Uh, so it was awesome to, to see them again. Um, go check them out. McGraw game day, pick them on Instagram. Uh, so shout out Landon, be sure to go check them out. Um, so great spent some time with them. Uh, met a couple of dog central folks that are active on the forum in J rab dog and Joe boss dog. Uh, got to talk to them at length. It was a lot of fun. Um, and then Brett building our buddy, uh, he took a fantastic picture, um, of the panel. So thank, thanks so much, Brett. That was a really good, uh, I think that was the best photo I saw actually. Yeah, <laughs> uh, it was a really good one. Um, but our tailgate host rodeo, one of our tailgate hosts rodeo made it out. Um, that was a lot of fun. Um, and, uh, Jay Abbott. So, you know, we had Dwight Don to talk about bulldogs battling breast cancer. So Jay and Teresa were the founders of bulldogs battling breast cancer and Jay made it. Uh, so I got to meet Jay. I'd never met Jay before. Um, the, the crew from Chapel Bell Curve was there. Uh, had not seen Nathan or Justin in quite some time. And I met Yara and I was like, oh my gosh, you're Yara. <laughs> <laughs> the famous Yara. <laughs> so that was, that was fun. Uh, I met Will Morrison uh, from the text thread from Doc Central. Um, and really I met, style. had met, met him in person. So that was great. Um, but then just wanted to say thanks to Home Field Apparel uh, and Josh Johns for hosting. Alex Kirshner of Split Zone Duo uh, for hosting. Go check out Split Zone Duo. It's a great podcast. Um, and then just thanks to Dog Central, Graham Coffey, John Smith, and George Foster. Big George Foster for being on the panel. Uh, it was a blast. It was a lot of fun. And I think George actually got me confident. <laughs> <laughs> so, George, George did. He was he was talking that he was talking that smoke. That was for sure. I got to say, when George got there, like when George like walked through the doorway, you're like, oh, George is here. Uh, he, he is, uh, every bit looks like he was a first round NFL offensive tackle. <laughs> <laughs> the pictures didn't do him any justice though. Oh man. Yeah. Yeah. And again, shout out to Brett. Cause we were all sitting in stools uh, with that angle of the picture. It did not look like, I mean, George is at least a foot taller than I am. Uh, he, he is, he is a specimen. He is a, a large, I mean, you know, he talks about this, about guys that play these days, large human. Uh, George is a large human. Um, <laughs> but man, what a, what a great guy. Uh, super nice. Got to sit and chat with, with George for a bit uh, before and after two. So it was a fun time. It was oh, a fun time. Awesome. I'm I'm super jealous, super jealous. Um, <laughs> but I'm glad that I'm glad I, I I jumped on to try to listen to some of the some of the uh, the live broadcast. Um, but uh, yep. hit hit us with some some highlights from from the actual actual panel itself. Give a quick quick summation. Okay, so Alex, you know, Kirshner hosted it. He kind of he was he did a great job of like hopping around from person to person. Um, he wanted to know, he, it was his first time in Athens. He had never been to a Georgia home game before. What? Uh, so he wanted to know, we talked about Athens, what makes Athens special. Um, he was so perplexed by the fact that he was, he walked around on campus all day Friday and saw like no one with a backpack on. He was like the ability for Georgia students to avoid class on Friday is elite. That was one of his comments. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Um, but so, yeah, so we talked about that, uh, just talked about kind of like what it, what it feels like uh right now to be a georgia fan uh we talked about uh munsoning and munsoning being dead um there are multiple sorry carters uh one <laughs> one by alex right right out the gate and then i i believe uh i think john smith hit us with a how about the fucking dogs sorry carter <laughs> i think that was uh i think that was john's so um what else uh, we got into, you know, we, we, we talked to Mizzou, talked about burden and kind of what we were or weren't worried about. Um, Kim, Kim corrected me on something because Kim listened and she's so one of the, one of the questions, wife, that, Kim. <laughs> one of the questions that came to me. So Kim had a, a yelling at the panel moment, uh, when she yes. listened. So one of the questions that came to me was, uh, like he talked about homecoming and, uh, the fact that homecoming was uh, started by Mizzou came up by the way, John. Uh, John tweets brought it up and I said that Graham, <laughs> Graham said, uh, like, thanks John for dropping some knowledge, knowledge. And I said that he clearly had just listened to your fun facts. Um, <laughs> but it was, but he ended up asking me like, is Georgia a homecoming school? And I, I just kind of answered it of like, here are the things we do on homecoming. But Kim corrected me and said that what I should have said is no, Georgia is not a homecoming school. Homecoming schools do homecoming to fill the stands and get butts in the seats homecoming weekend and Georgia has that atmosphere and that environment every game. So we don't need to be a quote homecoming school. So there you go. Yeah. So I liked her answer better than mine. 
Yes. <laughs> so you, you should have had some, you clearly should have had some coaching. I know. Seriously. I didn't know that. I didn't know that question was coming. So I will tell you, we didn't like know what he was going to ask. Like he kind of gave us some high level topics we were going to discuss, but we didn't know exactly what we were going to be talking about. So there was one moment where Alex, <laughs> he had started like down a certain path and he was like, so Jim. And I was like, I have no idea where he's going with this question. Like that's what went through my head. <laughs> and then it ended up being something fine. But um he did ask us, uh, like, what is it about Kirby Smart? Um, and, you know, why why has this worked so well at, at Georgia? And my one-liner was, he's one of us. So, he's one of us. Yeah. Um, I said other a, things, but that was basically it. That's an accurate That's an accurate assessment, I feel like. Yeah. So, um, so it, being home field in their apparel, um, did, they, um, did they, was there any uniform talk? We we didn't do uniform <laughs> talk. We did not. Okay. We stayed we stayed away from that. We stayed away from that. Uh, but yeah, but they they were there um, in full force and um, yeah, had a, had a bunch of folks come out and got a lot of home field uh, uh, gear. So I think it was a uh, it was a good night for all. So I, I know they were pleased with the event. Did great. you grab Did you grab one of those jackets? <laughs> I, I I got I picked one up for Dwight. Dwight wanted me to get one for him, so I did, but not for myself. Because <laughs> uh, you can I, already I, have one. Yeah, I'm I'm ripping my standing bulldog home field T-shirt tonight, so I've got that. Excellent. Okay. Awesome. Well, yeah. So it was a good time. It was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. But we don't don't need to dwell on that anymore. But yeah, again, thanks to everyone who came out. Uh, had an absolute blast, and uh, it's pretty fun getting to sit up and you know be sit with those with that crew and talk to the dogs uh, for an hour. So it was a lot of fun. Awesome. I'm super jealous. <laughs> So then, uh, so then you went back to Ponda's famous house, and and then and then you you had the game the next day, right? Game next day. Uh, so my sister came over uh, with my niece and uh, and friend uh, in the morning. My parents dropped us off at the tailgate, or when we walked down the tailgate. Um, so saw Rodeo again, hung out with the crew, um, and and did that. Um, made our way down to uh, Hug Dogs on the way in. Uh, ran into a, a buddy of mine from high school uh, that I know listens. Shout out Brad. Um, hadn't seen him in, in a minute, so that was a lot of fun. Uh, I got to hang out with him pregame. Um, they went on to the game where Frip Dog, my dad, made his return to Sanford Stadium. Uh, ah, the triumphant return. So my dad made it back. Uh, he was a game time decision. Uh, <laughs> he had been hopeful, and uh, we pretty much made the decision Friday night. Um, but they made it. And so he, he skipped the tailgates. We we're just a little worried about like the, you know, hard handshake or someone wanting to give him a hug. <laughs> and, yeah. yeah. <laughs> pat, pat, pat on the back and, and hitting the shoulder. Um, so he just went to the game. Um, I would have been so, one of those people. <laughs> yeah. I, right. right. <laughs> there were definitely moments in the game. I'm foreshadowing a little bit where, uh, Many of us were excited when big moments happened, yeah, yeah. and my mom was kind of like shielding my dad to make sure no one bumped into him. <laughs> she was good, so she was a great caretaker uh, and, and watched after him. I can imagine so. I, I wouldn't expect anything less. Yeah, yeah. So that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, yep. yep. I saw. I saw Greg. Greg wasn't in town. Did, did, he was. He was missing. Yeah, yeah. We didn't have Greg. We didn't have Greg. So Rudio held down the fort. Uh, did he hit a did he hit a rough patch on the turf before a game or something like that? Maybe, maybe. <laughs> I'm not sure. I, I didn't get I didn't get details. I don't know exactly, but I, I, yeah. I know he'll be back for Ole Miss. He'll be okay. back for Ole Miss. Because I know that we were we were going back and forth with that guy that I which I haven't even looked, to be honest. Um there's that, that Missouri guy that does the, 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 the tailgates. I can't remember what his name was. Tailgate. Oh yeah, well, yeah, like the tailgate. Yeah. Dad or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. And I so I don't believe he was there. There were a few Mizzou people. There was actually some Mizzou people who we had met at the home field thing um, that John introduced me to, and, and they came by. Well, that's not even talking to you. Uh, so it was a one Mizzou fan and then an Ole Miss fan who was supporting her friend who is, uh, has a Mizzou, Mizzou podcast. Uh, Mizzou, that's who, by the way. So shout out Maggie. Um, got, to, got to meet them and uh, had, had a good time. They, they stopped by the tailgate as well on Saturday. So you had a little foreshadowing with some Ole Miss folks too, huh? Right, exactly. Uh, yeah, well, apparently she did say that she got the jokes on Friday because I think when they got there, she was walking around with her old Miss stuff on and people were like, you're here a week early. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I would have uh, done the same thing. <laughs> uh, it's pretty good. Pretty good. Cool. Man, oh, yeah. 
and it was it was a pretty good day pretty warm too oh my gosh yes we were all like we were like we will not be uh you know we will not have to deal with the swirling winds you know in in the fourth quarter and so we had like way too much clothing so you know <laughs> people made fun of me on twitter and i guess rightfully so it did not get cold it did not um, get cold no pants and a polo was fine i was hot most of the day uh um, yeah I put on my jacket for like maybe five minutes in the fourth quarter at one point, and then I got hot again. I took it off. <laughs> I had uh, I had a whole fire ready to go, but I was like, "It's kind of it's kind of too hot. I'm not going to do this." <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but it's going to give. It's we get, we have some cooler weather coming in town, but we'll get to that for for next week. But uh, as far as the yep. game goes, like what you, you had texted us that the Missouri fans were here. Oh, okay. So it was weird. Like they were out in full force. It felt like out and about, um, throughout town at the tailgates. But then when I got Mm -hmm. into the stadium, it was just like every other game. Like, you know, they were basically kind of crowded around the band, which they didn't have the full band of like a pet band. Um, so kind of down there in that corner, you know, there were some Mm -hmm. scattered throughout, um, but it was mainly just down there in that corner. So I would say, I mean, they traveled, but it's still, I still haven't seen anything like what Georgia does still, you know, I haven't seen anyone come into Athens like that in a long time. Um, like when we were in school, you would see a ton of away fans in Athens. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I, you know, I think it's, I guess, you know, it's a sign of kind of where we're at and uh, we're not selling our tickets, <laughs> you know, online to folks. So we're protecting the home field. Yeah. You got to protect the home field. Uh, I think that that's definitely uh, an element that's, that, that would have been involved in that. Cause I mean, a lot of folks, I mean, I, I would probably be in that vein too. You know, I, I'm looking at, I was looking at, you know, maybe going for this last game and, you know, the ticket prices and game times and all those kinds of things kind of wore, wore you off. But like, um, you know, these, these ticket prices have been pretty, pretty stout. I mean, which you would expect for the back to back national champions. But exactly. Um, I imagine that these, you know, those folks that just come into town get the game day experience, which you can get, you can have a great time at a tailgate because I've had, I've done it multiple times. Right. Um, not going to the game can sometimes be fun. The only, the only bad parts about not going to the game is that the stadium erupts and then you're like, <laughs> oh, apparently something good happens. <laughs> <laughs> that is funny. Yeah, man. I, yeah. I don't know that I've experienced that to be that close during a game. You hear the roar and then you get the delay of the TV. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. It's uh, happened. It happened. Um, it happened to me when we went to the, when we went to the Oregon game and we watched it from the, from the parking lot mm-hmm. you could hear inside the inside Mercedes Benz, like roars and stuff. And then it, it happened to me before. And then I can't remember which game. It's right. Tennessee. Cause didn't you guys watch Tennessee from the tailgate last year? Yeah. Tennessee. You know? Yeah. 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 Yep. Well, when they, when the, actually, I don't know, did you, I don't know if they showed it on TV. There was a flyover. There was like a Coast Guard helicopter flyover. Did they show that on TV? On TV? If they did, I might've missed it. Okay. I've got, I got, I actually recorded that on my phone. I'll have to send that to you or I'll have to post that or something. Um, yeah. But yeah, so that was pretty cool. Um, but then, uh, I don't know, I guess we could talk about the game. One thing that I had totally forgot about, um, I was obviously upset about at the time, but I'd forgotten about until right before we started recording and I was, I was, uh, watching like the key plays we fumbled the open kick kickoff i mean we got it back but that was an, that was an omen <laughs> holy cow it's like what happened there oh man but i tell you what man that's definitely something that uh i'll be looking for here coming up is you know can can we figure out this this kicking situation because that's not the first time we've had that issue where either something's been mis misfielded or you know the, the the return guys will just make a boneheaded decision or like try to do too much or I, I don't know what it is but it, the return game has not been as crisp as you'd probably would like it to be for a, a team in our position yeah yeah and I think there was I think there was like some I don't know I don't know that I want to say confusion but you know Muse is the primary returner and they kicked it to Bell. And Mm -hmm. like for the next kick, they were kind of like standing next to each other, trying to like swap to confuse them or whatever, to make sure the ball, the kick went to Muse. I noticed that like later on in the game. So, yeah. 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 I mean, if I, if I was a team watching that and you had the opportunity to kick it, I I would probably be trying to kick it to bell. The other thing that I thought was really weird was that he caught it like right on the goal line. Had he just like let it go, it wouldn't have been a problem. 
Right. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with the touchback. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> oh man. But so we get the ball, right. Uh, we go down and we do get a field goal on the opening drive, but I think like right away we were reminded of the Missouri defense. Like, yeah, you know, we did talk about in the preview, right. About like last year and how disruptive they were with Stetson. Um, and that really continued. I mean, they are aggressive on defense and they were disruptive to Carson. Yeah. Yeah. He was definitely uncomfortable. And I feel like that there was definitely as the game wore on and he got knocked down a few times. Cause I think, I think that was the first time. Wasn't this the first game that he's had like multiple sacks? It sounds right. I'm not sure if that's a, a totally accurate, but I mean, it, he's, he's stayed very clean for this season. He's stayed clean all, all season long. Yeah. Um, yeah, in any in any case, it was odd to see him taking sacks, and I think that the the pace of which the pocket collapsed on him was was a problem. I was happy to see him step up in the pocket on one of those on one of those and rip off a really long run. I was like, hey, there he is. Yes, <laughs> true. Yeah, he did that a couple of times too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so I, you know, I would say that the offensive line, my my buddy Stacy and I, we got to talk. We we got to get together and have some beers or something. Like, got to figure this out because it's it's going to get worse and worse as as the as the months roll on, as the months weeks roll on, um, and we get to SEC championship and all those kinds of things. So, um, yeah, I, it, it was it was unfortunate to watch him go down as many times as he did. That was kind of my question for you: was did the offensive line? And your your boy Stacy Searles, like, did the line take a step back in this game, or was it more just like, hey, Mizzou's defense is really good? I think it's a combination of things, like a combination of like, I don't think that they played particularly well. Um, I mean, yeah, they yeah they did good. Yeah, they've they've got guys that can rush the passer and stuff, but like, we've got guys that are five stars. Like, yeah, is, we we shouldn't be we shouldn't be getting getting pushed off the ball the way that they were. Um, you know. Now that said, like there's a couple of times when I felt like that Carson was probably holding on to the ball a little too long. Um, there, I didn't, I didn't, haven't gone back to watch all all of them, but I do remember a couple of different plays. There was one play like later in the game in the second half when he was was throwing a ball away, and it looked like if had he just looked over to his right, he had Dominic Love like basically wide open. Mm. Um, yeah. there was another play earlier in the game where if he just held on to the ball a little bit longer, he had a guy breaking wide open. If you just hit him, you know, there's a couple of, a couple of passes here and there where, um, you know, he rushed. I don't know if he just felt rushed or like the pressure got to him where he was rushing his throws and you know, he, he made some off, some off throws, um, here and there. And so that was something that I thought was problematic in, you know, if you're if you're a team watching that Georgia team, like if you can figure out a way to get pressure on on our offensive line the way that Missouri was able to do, mm. that that might be a, that might give you a path forward for a more talented team that's deeper in the secondary and deeper in in the front seven. Right, right, yeah, no, that that makes sense. Um, let's see, they so we're mentioning. Um, Oh, maybe I remember you were saying that that one pass, whether it was Ra Ra or Love, it was open. But you know, it was, it was interest. I guess interesting, cool, maybe I don't know, cool, interesting to see um, Love it going up against his old squad. Um, scored the first touchdown of the game, which I didn't realize live. Like, as actually, my dad and I, we, we had rewatched a couple of plays this morning. Uh, I didn't realize like how close there they had like a blitzing linebacker or a corner or something that like almost batted that ball down. Um, on that kind of little bubble screen, which apparently also Kirby said that Carson checked into that, by the way. So the first touchdown, that's not, um, I don't know exactly how it was called, but apparently he he recognized something and, and checked into that play. Um, but then, you know, w- once uh, Lovett caught it, he kind of walked into the end zone. Um, and yes, Fletcher, I did love it when that happened. I know he, he asked that on Twitter. <laughs> did, did you love it? <laughs> oh, man. But uh, yeah. But also, um, I was gonna say post game for him. I know, like I, I saw like he like went straight for Burden, and they they hugged on the field uh, when the game was over. So I'm sure that was kind of a weird uh, situation going to go, going up against your old team like that. But anyways, sorry, you were saying you were saying something. Oh no, I was just gonna say like yeah, that that, that probably would have been weird. Um, 
as far as like the wide receiver position goes, like uh, I think the the broadcast crew kind of uh, talked about this that you know that they've got. I think I think in the at the point in time when they were talking about it, they're like they, there's been eight different rushers in this game for Georgia, and uh, he's they're right. Like there's just there's so many there's so many weapons uh, all across the field for for this team, and yeah. you know they, I, I feel like that you know maybe the Florida game you could make an argument for us. Like there's a couple of plays that just like I mean I'll give you like the for instance like there are some plays that I feel like that either Missouri just saw and expected where they got completely blown up like there was one pass to uh, there was one pass to Dylan Bell um, that in particular sticks out to me where that Missouri fans were like all up in arms about it being like a catch and a fumble which. I thought it might have been a fumble uh, when I was watching it live. They never really went back and reviewed it all that much, but um, it basically was just like a. I actually thought that like when we were watching the replay, like we watched. I think we they watched one replay and like it just kind of moved on. And it never was like one of those like laborious reviews. But yeah. During the first, initial replay, I was like, that kind of looks like targeting. <laughs> <laughs> was it the Was it Rosemary Jack Saint? Because there was one of oh. Rosemary. Maybe that where, maybe that's where I, I thought it was Dylan Bell that caught it, but maybe it was Rosemary Jack Saint. There was definitely one to Rosemary where he got like we just we like didn't block on the perimeter or something, and he and he got drilled. He, he got, got drilled. absolutely drilled. Yeah, yeah, that must yeah. have been the one I was thinking of. There was another one in the flat that Carson like again like it seemed like that there was a bunch of guys close the pocket was closing in, and he didn't have enough time to kind of allow the play to develop. And maybe that's, maybe that's the takeaway in this game. So there's a pass, like he threw it to Dylan Bell and the pass didn't even, didn't even make it to Dylan Bell. Like it was, it basically fell complete behind him. It's like he threw it behind him. Mm -hmm. Um, I think even if he catches it, he ends up getting blown up again. I think that they're, they were ready for, they were ready for those quick little passes into the flats and our little bubble screens with the exception of like, a handful of plays there yeah but it seemed like that they were ready for for that setup and the way that the plays were were going i feel like that if i was a coaching staff i would say okay we put in these plays that were kind of required guys to be in motion and moving around a lot and requiring a lot of setup time basically and if you don't have that time coming from the offensive line you've got to pivot the game plan right and i wonder how much of that like the fact that they were coming off a of bye week comes yeah. into play there, you know, like they maybe figured something out. <laughs> I I don't disagree. I I think I might have mentioned that in the preview that, um, you know, them them coming off a of bye week to me was was kind of a, a, an a, an annoyance at best. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Um, and I don't know. Ole Miss Ole Miss played, so they're they're not going to be coming off a of bye week. I don't know. Mm -hmm. if, if Tennessee's, I'm trying to think of anybody on the rest of our schedule if they're going to be coming off of a bye week. I don't think so at this point. I don't believe so. Yeah. Which probably bodes well for us because if you have two weeks to prepare for this team uh, this year in particular, it, it makes you a little bit. It, it gives you better odds against this team for sure if you got two weeks to prepare for them. Agreed. Yeah, I, I know Tennessee isn't because they're playing uh, Missouri this week, so mm. they won't be coming off a bye either. So that'll be interesting to watch and see how the how Missouri plays them because um you know it'll give us they're a pretty good defense um so I think that that's one of those things that you know we 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 did not lose we did not um we did not lose to them but they were a good team right they were a good de a good defense good offense and probably indicative and at least a good a good test for yeah. for getting us battle ready for down the road um we kind of had to overcome some came from behind, you know, that kind of thing. So, yeah, they're good, man. That we, we, be, we beat a very good football team on Saturday. I a hundred percent believe that. Um, but, but don't let any, but don't let any uh, Ohio state folks talk to you about that, man. They beat, they beat a really tough Rutgers team on the road in New Jersey last this past weekend. Yeah. yeah seriously. <laughs> on CBS, by the way, then that's, uh, I'll, uh, I'll talk about that. Like, that's another thing, Carter. <laughs> so we were watching the game. He's he, like, I was, we were trying to figure out which, which games to watch. We have a, a guy in the neighborhood who's a K-State fan. So I was trying to watch K-State Texas and Carter mm. like, oh, let's watch Ohio State Rutgers. Come on. And so, um, and so we, we turned it on and, uh, and Carter was like, wait, what's that sound? <laughs> And I was like, what do you mean? It was like the, that, that music they're playing. And I was like, yeah, that's the SEC music. 
or the, yeah. it's it's the CBS, it's the CBS football music. It was, they're doing that for Big Ten now. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it was like he just realized that like uh, CBS was no longer going to be around, and they're going to be doing the Big Ten stuff. So, uh, it's so a that's what you have a taste. That's what you have a taste of. You have Ohio State playing uh, Rutgers in New Jersey. <laughs> Man, so they had like a, they had a triple header. They, they had, had a that, triple header. Then they had us in Bama. Unless you, that's crazy. Um, They're going to miss did, us next year, though. Yeah, seriously. Uh, also, McConkey still on his donkey. Uh, mm-hmm. Seven catches, 95 yards. I think Kirby made a big deal about that we finally completed a post route. I, I guess that had been a point of contention on the <laughs> offense, uh, not being able to do that. Uh, that was the lad. That, that was like right before the uh, touchdown pass to Delp, uh, which was very nice, by the way. At, in the stadium, that was in the other end zone. And like, I think my dad and I both thought Carson like short armed it, but and like the Delp wasn't going to catch it, but he threw it basically where the defender couldn't get. So it was, exactly. actually it was great. It was a great pass. Um, mm-hmm. But there's also the play where like, again, one of those kind of swing out to the lateral passes was not blocked well. And lad like put a guy in the spin cycle and made the guy totally whiff uh and got a first down i mean he uh he is looking good he, he's not looking like the back is bothering him uh, yeah no there's a couple of there's a couple of times in the in these games that he's played in i'm like oh if, if i had a hurt back I, I would probably be hurting from that <laughs> yeah seriously so um I, I you know i'm hoping that he's he's completely healthy because you know, I think that Lad was one of those guys that if you went back and looked at the tapes, you know, that's what some of the guys in the text thread were talking about. That you know, if if Beck is going back and looking at tape, Lad's open a significant amount of time. So, yeah. um, I haven't I haven't gone back to look. Did you notice anything on, on when you were looking at it? I did not. No. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Maybe that'll I... be that'll be that'll be one thing that that'll be nice about this next game that we have coming up because I think that don't they for the. Don't they do it for the, the the game day games? Don't they have like the all the all eleven? Mm, it's a good question. Yeah. Anyway, I'm not sure. Yeah, they may with it being the seven o'clock CBS, which we didn't talk about that. Yeah. So next week, Ole Miss game seven o'clock kickoff. Um, it'll be on three thirty at Tennessee the following week. But yeah, we'll need to watch that. So sometimes they do like kind of like the multi channel broadcast thing. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. We'll, we'll we'll look out for that. Um. But I know the other thing you wanted to hit on was the uh, Carson Beck and his his record, his streak extending. Yeah, he 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 set an SEC record uh, last week at Florida. Um, he's had eight consecutive. He he said his he's thrown for over two hundred and fifty yards in his first eight starts, and then he just did it again against Missouri. So he's extending his SEC record of consecutive games throwing for over two hundred and fifty yards. And I feel like that he's not getting the respect that he deserves, but I tell you who is giving him respect, Jim Mm. Vegas. Mm. Okay. With each passing week, Carson Beck's numbers and John was the one that that talked about that. He kind of followed up on something that uh, I had kind of noticed in after the Florida game, you still had pretty decent odds that, uh, you know, if you wanted to throw 50 bucks or something like that at at Carson Beck winning the Heisman, because I, you know, if you continue, it's just like the it's just like the the Brock Bowers conversation. At this point, it's just a math equation for him. Right. If he keeps hitting these numbers, we're gonna probably going to keep we're probably going to keep winning these games if he keeps hitting these numbers. Yeah. And if he keeps hitting those numbers, eventually he's going to play himself into a numerical Heisman contention because there's nobody else that's going to be able to really compete with him. Because I mean, you look at this like I mean, I would have said Jaden Daniels had he you know not lost in this past this past weekend and not gotten knocked out like he probably would have been odds on favorite to to win the Heisman if he was able to continue and, and to not have another loss and so now you're looking at like okay well now Michigan's got Penn State coming up and then they got Ohio State again you know what I mean so like yeah there's there's a number of there's a number of guys that are going to have opportunities to potentially fall and as long as Carson just keeps taking care of business and as long as Georgia keeps taking care of business like Eventually, he's going to be in New York. Yeah, there's. I mean, there wouldn't be a there wouldn't be a, a a valid justification to keep him out of there if he keeps putting up these numbers. Yeah, I agree. I agree. All right. Um, you cool if we take a moment to remind everyone about the uh, the sponsor? Uh, yeah. So season uh, season four, of my got a podcast presented by Oxia Time. Uh, so be sure to go check them it. out. I had, to, got- I had to adjust my watch, Jim. Sorry. You had to just oh time change. 
Time change. I did that. I, I, I lied. I did that already. <laughs> <laughs> but you did have to adjust the time on the on the the automatic swish watch. That is amazing. That is true. Um, yeah. So I, uh, you know, I actually okay. So you know, John, I always talk about how I, I really enjoy my my NATO strap, right? That I've got, mm-hmm. and I know I know you like you like your stainless steel strap. I will say at this, at this point, my Oxia watch is is undefeated. So <laughs> it's true. It's true. So I'll tell you. So okay. So on that note, I you know since I was going to be up on the stage at the foundry for this panel, I wanted to put on the stainless steel band because I felt like it would shine a little bit more on the stage. And so, so, I, so I did, so, so I was able to change it out, uh, change it out, but then change it back for the game. Uh, because, uh, you know, again, because I wanted to keep what I had been doing. So I had been wearing the NATO strap all season. So I, I, uh, I, I changed to the stainless steel for the event and then went back to the NATO strap for the game. So, you know, on that interchangeable straps, they give you the tools to make the changes yourself. Uh, pretty cool. You're not, you're not stitious. You're just a little stitious. Exactly. You're not super, super stitious. You're just a little, little stitious. Just a little stitious. <laughs> so be sure to head over to oxiatime.com. That's A X I A T I M E.com. Uh, they've got the 2021 and 2022 National Championship Watch collections over there. Uh, and you can find the Kirby Smart Autographed uh, Limited Edition watches. Uh, you can find those on the site as well. So thanks again to Oxia Time. Uh, and remember, my got a podcast. You can use that code to get a special uh, presentation box with your timepiece as well. All right. The defense, uh, the defense, you know, Missouri had, obviously the offense was very good. The offense was explosive. And we saw that explosiveness on the first drive with the deep pass, um, to burden. Um, I actually remember like when he caught that pass and he was so open, my sister, I was sitting next to my sister and she looked at me like, what just happened? (laughs) And I was like, it's okay. He's like the best receiver in the country. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, you know, we'll figure it out. We knew he was going to do that at least once. Like, it's okay. We got it out of the way. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, they, like, schemed, they schemed around him. That's for sure. Yeah. Like, so, and that was the thing. So one of the things we talked about was like, what were we, what were we going to do with him? And will we see Lassiter move around? And that's exactly what we did. And we didn't do it the way I really thought we would. Um, Cause like that first touchdown, he caught it over Everett. Um, but they put Lassiter in the slot on burden, which we hadn't seen him play slot corner before he was usually on the edge. So I thought that was interesting, but he, I mean, he really did. He neutralized him, um, mm-hmm. made it, made a huge difference once we made that change. So, yeah, I mean, so here's, so here, this, this team came in, you know, with the whole, the whole reputation of just being this wide open offense, right? This, mm-hmm. this, this just completely unstoppable offense. And Luther Burden was uh, branded as like like you said the best wide receiver in the country. Well, the best wide receiver in the country, three receptions, fifty three yards, one touchdown. Yeah, which a ch- huge chunk of those thirty nine of those yards was was the, the was the touchdown. So aside from that, yeah, dude, buddy, buddy was was locked down. Um, yeah. they had uh, the, the next best guy was Theo Weiss Jr. Um, he had five receptions, ninety yards um no touchdowns he had a long of 30 so like they had some long plays but again like you you look at those stat lines and then like further up the chain you look at brady cook you know 14 of 30 212 passing yards one touchdown two interceptions a qbr of 72 that's on allegedly one of the best quarterbacks in the country yeah yeah i mean it it was um we by comparison, made... by comparison, Carson Beck, yeah. 21 of 32 for 254 yards, two touchdowns, zero interception, QBR of 84. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, the turnovers were so huge late and especially that last one, right? Like, what do we talk about? If you could get this team behind and make mm-hmm. them have to press, then good things are going to happen for our defense because that's exactly what happened late in the game against LSU. And that's what happened later in the game against us. Um, so, you yeah. know, you, you, you get them behind like that. And I mean, and they fought back, man. They're good. Like, I, I'm i not going to say I was super pleased when they when they got that touchdown and then the two-point conversion to cut it to three, um, you know, late. Um, but then our offense, you know, was able to pull, pull together a, a nice drive right after that and, and answer, um, you know, two field goals after that. But the defense really, the defense really sealed it for us. Um, I know a couple of the huge plays. Um, so on the opening drive of the second half, 
Uh, so the first Missouri drive, it actually felt kind of weird. Like they came out kind of firing on all cylinders. You know, it's usually like, oh, Georgia makes such great adjustments at halftime. Um, but they, they came out kind of doing like, look like re-energized almost Missouri's offense did. Um, but we bogged them down, right? Like we've talked about the kind of bend, but don't break. You get, you get near the red zone. That's when Georgia really clamps down. And that's what we did there on that drive. Um, that was where we, we basically, we ended it and held to a field goal on a, uh, Tyke Smith came on a blitz and just crushed cook. Uh, it was an amazing sack. Um, and held him to a field goal, which was a, a huge play because um, they were really driving and could have set a tone for the second half. And then I think that that was a really that was a pretty big game changing play. Um, and then we talked about Lasseter, but Humphrey, man, Humphrey, this 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 game was the most we had seen him. And he had, he made some really big plays. Yeah, I, he we didn't really I didn't have him on my notes. You know what I mean? Kind of thing. Yeah. I didn't have I didn't expect him to be such a factor. I think Dalen Everett, they they kind of picked on him a little bit, which, you know, yeah. I feel like that the coaching staff pulled him out, you know, to stop the bleeding in certain situations, but then they did throw him back out there again. They did. You know, a couple of times. And I think that he, you know, he kind of responded decently, I felt like. Um, but yeah, I think that the overall, like you look at the the win probability, right? Like, I mean, as tight as it felt, right? Like the win probability never really dipped below 60 percent roughly um yeah so even though we were you know again just felt like that we were going to be able to figure this out um my buddy my buddy that was uh my buddy that i told you about was like always like fire fire bubble he's like the the text thread version of the guy behind you which was the guy behind you or back dad my dad asked that we talked about that uh, so my answer to my, my dad was like we were talking about the person right behind us and how nice they were. And my dad was like, that wasn't the Bobo guy, was it? I was like, no, no, no. The Bobo guy is kind of like over my right shoulder. Like, well, was he there? And I was like, I don't know. I turned around. I was like, I definitely never heard him. I was like, so either he's not coming to the games anymore or he has, he, he can't complain about Bobo anymore. <laughs> <laughs> right. He listened to the podcast. <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I'd say that there's like my, my, my one, my one complaint about Bobo right now although there were definitely I don't know the play calling I felt like was sporadic I guess for lack of a better for lack of a better um you know description which did so speaking of like the sporadic play calling so like I'll give you like a for instance which probably would have been like the most mind-boggling part of the game okay do you remember when uh Clay Vandegrift came in (laughs) yeah 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 Brock Brock Vandegrift but yes, yes, I yes. do. But the, but the broadcasters called him Clay, which by oh, the they way, did. Oh, so I didn't know that. I didn't get your joke. The, that was the whole joke. Oh my gosh, <laughs> I haven't seen it on TV. <laughs> no, we've been we we joked about it on the on the text thread that they uh, called him Clay. They called him Clay Vandegrift. I actually tweeted that out. I was like, <laughs> run the dang back. <laughs> oh man, yeah. No. Sorry, sorry. I was in the stadium. I missed it in the text thread. My bad. My bad. Yes. <laughs> yes. No. So the broadcast crew called him Clay Vandegrift when he came in. So first of all, like that oh was the gosh. first thing. Carter, Carter looked at me and was like, what? <laughs> These guys are horrible. <laughs> and, oh my gosh. And then then the next thing you're like, why is he in the game? Was this... there ever any any indicator or like, was there any anything that ever was answered about why Vandegrift came in? I have no idea. I know I asked, I asked the text thread because I was so confused. Um, I think I said like, did Beck lose his helmet on the last play or something? Because I couldn't figure it out. Like I, I assumed he was hurt when when we because I think they had gone a timeout or something. It was a TV timeout or something, and we came back and Vandergriff was in, and we were in the stands. We were just so confused. Yeah. So all right. So so you had that play, yeah. and then there was another play where I, I don't know. It was just kind of like that was it was just a it was a throwaway play. It was a completely wasted play in the red zone on the goal line. And you just felt like, of course, you know, I think a few plays later, later he hit, he hit the, um, he hit the little screen pass to, um, to Dominic, but yeah. Yeah. I, it just, it just was just like, man, like, what are we doing here? And then later on in the game, the same thing kind of happened. Like, well, that was kind of a wasted play. I don't know. There was definitely some questionable things that came up and you kind of wonder, I was like, this is, this is the kind of stuff that people that hate the, the, the stereotypical Bobo. This is the kind of stuff that they they talk about. Like, why are yeah. we doing this? 
when it seems like, I mean, I'll be honest, like it seemed like that at multiple points in the game, particularly in the first half, I was like, let's just stop running the ball and just let Carson just sling it. <laughs> like, yeah, just yeah. stop running the ball. <laughs> it, it did feel like that at times, but then at the same time, like when, if we tried to run a slow developing play, he'd get sacked. So I don't know. I know Kirby actually, Kirby actually did make a comment about like, he was proud of how Bobo stuck with the run. <laughs> <laughs> he's like that's my boy <laughs> <laughs> he's like other coaches would have abandoned the run but he didn't so i thought that was kind of funny yeah yeah i mean uh, it definitely wasn't one of our better running running games but um no it wasn't it wasn't you know we were fairly even we were fairly even in the run game you know we had 131 yards they had 151 yards we had 33 attempts they had 34 you know they averaged 4.4 we had four I mean, in general, the game was pretty even statistically. It was turnovers. And uh, and again, I know Kirby mentioned even return game. I mean, Muse almost broke broke one for a touchdown at one point. He had like one guy. When it, you know, I feel like if he had made, been able to make one more guy miss, he takes one of those, that last kickoff return to the house. I think there was also a play that Kendall had um, where he kind of got tripped up at the line and Carter and I are both were like, Oh, if he doesn't get tripped up there, he's gone. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, we, had, we had a couple of moments like that. Um, how about uh, Brett Thorson getting some national flowers on, on TV? Um, they finally like started talking about the fact that no one has returned a single kick on, on him. I mean, that's like the craziest stat. It I, really I, is. Like, I still he, can't believe it. I, I I have a feeling that like of all of the punters that are out there, right? Like you have these guys that are like really good at, at, at punts and whatnot, but like the whole point of punting it is to get it as high and as deep as possible so that they can't return it. Right. And that's exactly what he's doing. So like, I'm, I'd be, I'd be curious to see like how he, how he pans out in the, in the NFL because hang time is a premium in the NFL. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. It was a big day for the kickers. Uh, it was, yeah. It was a big payday. How many points did he actually have? I didn't even know. I didn't even look. Uh, let's see. He had we had three field goals, so that's nine. So he should have had eleven points, I would think, right? Wait, what? Eleven punts? Oh, sorry. I I no. said payday. <laughs> did you said points, right? No, I said punts. Like how many, how many punts? punts? Did... Oh, sorry, because I was talking about wood ring. I thought you said how many points did he have? I didn't hear you right. <laughs> I'm sure. Uh, so he had three puns. So that's okay. like a. I mean, he's going to be sore. He's probably sore today. That's a lot of work. There's a lot of work. He's not. He's <laughs> not used work. to such things. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, I was just saying, kicking game. I mean, Woodring. Uh, that last field goal, man, was. Uh, he he nailed it, and we and we got the amazing reaction from the fan uh, in the stands when Woodring drilled that field goal. Have you seen that? What do you mean? When Woodring made that last field goal, there was a, they they cut to a crowd reaction, and this guy was celebrating. Oh, he was dancing the the dancing not, guy, not the dancing guy. It's like he oh, was like oh, he was like, like, the, like the, yeah, yeah. Like, yes. yes. <laughs> someone said someone said that uh, that they know a guy that, that that bet the that bet the fifty fifty point five over or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. That's funny. I know a guy that 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 bet the over his entire paycheck on the over. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Um, but yeah, but then obviously, I don't know, the play of the game, the one that led to the payday at the end, our guy from TikTok, Nazir Stackhouse, with the pick and the wheels, almost took it to the house. Although I guess now I'm kind of glad he didn't because of the block, the illegal block. <laughs> yeah, if he'd have taken it to the house and it got wiped out from a stupid block, which... I don't know. I, I actually, I now that I say that, I don't know that I went back and looked to see. Like, was it bad? Like, by the rules, it was a hundred percent a blindside block. Um, so basically, he hit the he blocked the guy who I'm assuming was the intended receiver. Like, it was a pretty bad pass. Um, like he threw it right to his ear, and uh, Munden just took out. I don't know if it was Schrader. I'm assuming it was Schrader. Um, because I think he was thrown into the running back. Um, he absolutely just leveled him. And yeah, you can't do that. But here's my what kind of irks me about it is if you if you watch as the play unfolds, when Nazir gets pretty close to the end zone, there's two guys chasing him. And then Jalen Walker comes in and does what you're taught to do now to not get a blindside block. He did I I think kind of like a shield, a shield block, I guess, where like he he turned his back to the defender and put his arms and put his hands in the air. 
to try and shield him. And one of the guys dove right through him and made the tackle, you know, like in the olden times when you were allowed to throw blocks, like he would have come Walker would have come across and just leveled those, leveled those guys. Leveled both of them. Yeah, exactly. And now like, he's like, Oh, well I can't do that. I'm going to get a penalty. So I have to shield him. And then the guy made the tackle. So I don't know. Like, I guess it's, I'm having a bit of a get off my lawn moment, but I just thought that was interesting to see those, those, the dichotomy there of the blind side block, but then what you're supposed to do not working later on, on the same play. I thought that was interesting, but yeah. Like what do you want them to do kind of thing? Exactly. Exactly. But if you haven't seen like Nazir's uh, interviews talking about the play, they're amazing. Uh, I think he said like he was out of breath, like halfway <laughs> on this <laughs> run and everything. <laughs> Uh, but it was incredible. Okay. So a couple of things about that play. That is the play that I was talking about where, where my mom was trying to shield my dad to make sure we didn't all like our, uh, circle of hugging, celebrating the interception didn't like injure my dad's shoulder. That was the play. Um, also <laughs> according to Lily, Kim spiked her phone in the house and broke her phone. Her, not, not broke her phone, broke her phone case. Her phone's Aww. fine. Her phone's fine. And like uh, Kim, Kim says that Lily is completely exaggerating what happened. <laughs> <laughs> but but the celebration of that play did break her phone case. Uh, but her phone's fine. <laughs> that is hilarious. Okay, so I I just while we were talking about this, I pulled it up to to like see that play. I have a feeling that there's two different there's two di- two distinct uh, differences between what uh, Jalen Walker did and um, whoever it was. I can't see. It was Munden. Uh, Munden. Well. So here's here's the difference between those two plays. So you know Stackhouse catches the ball. Munden is about eight yards behind the catch. Um, it does not appear that he was anywhere near like the like intended receiver. Like there's nothing like that guy was never going to be involved in that play, and he just yeah. took him out anyway. That, yeah, there had 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 Jalen Walker come through and done and like done a clear out block like what you're talking about. I don't think based on the angle, right? That it would have been a blindside block had he actually blocked, but like. Either right. way, like it's kind of weird. Maybe he thought that he was going to get in anyway. Yeah. Um, but to your point, like instead of like clearing them out, he ends up being like tripped up by one of the guys, basically. Yeah. So, but um, it was an interesting play. But dude, yeah. it was. I mean, dude, the stadium exploded when he caught that inter- when he made that interception, and then it. and then you know he's just chugging down the sideline and like. I couldn't see at that point. I was like, who was that? And then when I realized it was Stack House, I was like, yes. <laughs> He's got to yeah, make a TikTok. Has he made a TikTok about it yet? He needs to make a TikTok about it. I don't know. I have to check. Um, that's one of those things where it's like, you know, I, he he deserves a big play and maybe that'll be a spark for this defensive line. I don't know. Yeah. Like yeah. They they need they needed a, they needed something. Yeah. But the defense, the defense, you know, closed the game out with that. That led to the field goal, make it a nine point game. Which <laughs> when the next time the, the when Missouri had the ball, my dad kept being like, last time I checked, there's not a nine point touchdown. So I think we're okay. Um, but then uh <laughs> I love it, Lou. <laughs> um but then uh you know, Bullard completely ended it with his pick. So the the guy continues to amaze. He's uh he's special. Yeah, so uh I feel like I heard some folks talking about that particular play and how they baited they baited him into throwing it or something like that. Mm. Did you did you hear any of that? I have not. Like, no, I've been driving all day. <laughs> oh man, there's some there's some amazing. I'm, I'm just like you know, since I had that play up on the highlights, it's like going through. There's some there's some amazing <laughs> there's some amazing Missouri fan reaction gifts that I could <laughs> potentially pull down for all the crying that the Missouri fans are doing. <laughs> oh, that's funny. That's funny. <laughs> but yeah, no, they're. I can't remember who it was talking about the the interception that Bullard did where like basically the coverage that we threw out there was such that it like I don't I don't know. He like he was on the run and he was he was trying to throw it away, it seemed like, but like I don't know. They, he, he wasn't he did, trying to throw it away. He did he did too much or something. I, yeah. I don't know what it was, but like basically yeah. he he tried to he tried to he tried to do too much with it. It really is what it comes down to. Exactly. That's and that's the thing. It's like they're down. They he tried to force it. I mean, that's how I saw it. But yeah, that's that's kind of one of those things. That's kind of one of those things that uh, that I was expecting. That here's the thing. So if we if we end up in a in, in a game, you know, we have coming up here. If you end up with a shootout with this team and you're in a position where you have to throw on them, and we know that you're going to throw on on us, 
Like I, I just I like that matchup. If 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 we're in a late game where they have to catch up by going through the air, I really like our chances to to completely like strangle strangle the game out because our secondary is has got to be one of the best in the country, if not the best. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Just just top to bottom, like top to bottom, not just like one guy. I mean, right, right, right. we're talking about we talked about um, we talked about Humphrey. We talked about um, Bullard. Uh, we haven't even talked about Tyke Smith in this game. Like he wasn't really a big factor in this game. Right. Well, he like, had that huge sack that I've talked about yeah. at the end of that drive. We, but, but yeah, but yeah, we, like, we move guys around a bit. We have we have we have talent up and down the field, much like we do on the offensive side, where we're talking about all these different receivers, that and and running backs that have that have come through the game. So like it's just like on the secondary side of things, I just feel like that there's so many other weapons that it's, I like I like our chances when someone ha- is forced to throw the ball to to get down the field. Yeah, agreed, agreed. Um, okay, since we forgot it last time. Wanna and I'm gonna again give you some flowers. Uh you did uh make make a little bit of gain in coaches over unders. Uh so you went four and four. Uh I went three and five. I was I went over three on offense uh for coaches over unders. <laughs> so not a great week for me. So I still have the lead, uh, but you are going moment by moment. You're gonna keep chopping, John, and uh we'll we'll see how it plays out. So shout out to Coach Drill. Thanks again for uh for checking this for us. Keep chopping. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't know. I feel like that at some point, like I'm going to be in a position where like, I'm going to have to like make these decisions that go against what I want. (laughs) (laughs) You try to catch up. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, That's funny. That's funny. All right. Well, I don't know. You you got anything else on this one? No, man, it was, it was a good game. Um, It was nice watching from home. I, even, even though I couldn't be there, I tried to participate with, uh, Oh, we've got the, we've got the Google lights or whatever. And so I, I turned on the red lights at the house. Oh, nice. Nice. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah, it was, uh, it was a good one. Uh, everyone stayed for the whole game. So, uh, traffic was a little crazy getting out of Athens, but we made it, we made it back to my parents' house. And then, uh, I think we, we, in the, in the podcast before the podcast, I, I drove home this morning. I went from Athens to Charlotte to Winston Salem and now I'm back in Charlotte. So Ella, Ella sang in the North Carolina all state chorus today. Uh, it was fantastic. Honestly, it was, that was one of the best high school choral performances I've seen. And uh, I was a high school choral performer myself. So I uh-huh. kind of know what I'm talking about. I've been in the arena, so to say, I, John. I didn't uh, know. I didn't know this. Yeah. Yeah. It was excellent. You're, it was fantastic. Yeah. You you, you, you seem like you'd make a, a lovely soprano. I was a tenor. I was a tenor. Yeah. <laughs> I, I couldn't sing today after screaming my head off last night uh nice. like that but uh yes i was a tenor <laughs> what was her what was her like repertoire or what was the what were the songs that she sang you wouldn't know them i didn't know them uh oh, okay. but they but they had like they had a, an out of state uh conductor uh who used to be he used to be at ecu um but now he's out in uh in utah um came in to to teach instruct them for the weekend um it was excellent they did like six songs they were all very good. Mm. Well, if it was anything like my teenager, she was probably singing Christmas songs. <laughs> Christmas <laughs> no, music is on in my house. Right there were, there, I'll tell you this. There were only two that were in English. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. It was good. Not not ideal. <laughs> but I'm glad that she did great. He, well, yeah. He would explain what they meant uh, before. <laughs> got it. <laughs> for the four months. Uh, it, was, it, was, it was fantastic. It was really good. So kudos. Yes. Yes. It was a good, it was a good weekend, man. Had a lot of fun. Um, missed you, but, uh, we'll, we'll sync back up again. We have, we have some other opportunities coming down the pipeline. I'm hoping. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Cool, man. Well, uh, we do know the kickoff time for the next foe. Uh, so again, Ole Miss will be a a night game. Um, Mm -hmm. we'll be back to preview them soon, but like we said, uh, this one was for the lead in the East. Uh, we haven't clinched it yet, uh, but we maintain that lead. Uh, Missouri's out of the running now. Um, that was a heck of a football team that we beat on Saturday night. Yeah, and uh, you know, for for everyone out there, you maybe have a chance to go by and um, wave goodbye to Pat McAfee. Like, <laughs> he maybe he's coming back. I don't know, but like, you can you have the opportunity. It's, it's out there. <laughs> nice, because game day is coming to town. <laughs> <laughs> 
I want to. I want to be like. I, I want to make a sign. Uh, you know, if we end up going, I, I want to make a sign that says like, you know, I, I made a sign, but Pat McAfee blocked it or something like that. <laughs> nice. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, I'm gonna hold you to that. I'm gonna hold you to that. <laughs> uh, awesome, man. Well, it was a fun one. Uh, hey, dogs are still on top. Nine and no. Let's just keep keep doing it. Keep the main thing the main thing. Just just win, baby. Go dogs. Go dogs.